Earth's history is written in stone, layer after layer, stretching back nearly four billion years. But what if I told you there's a hole in that record so massive, so unthinkably vast, that a billion years are just missing, erased from every continent, as if time itself vanished? This is the prehistoric time hole. No one can explain the great unconformity. From the Grand Canyon to Scotland, from South Africa to Australia, scientists agree up to 1.3 billion years of history are gone, with four to six kilometers of crust stripped clean. Why did this global amnesia happen and what could possibly have erased more history than the age of animals itself? To answer that, we have to go back to the canyon where the mystery began. The story begins with 10 men in four wooden boats launching onto the Colorado River on May the 24th, 1869. Their leader, John Wesley Powell, had only one arm and a stubborn fascination with the unknown. The canyon walls towered above them, mile after mile of stone, each layer a silent witness to ancient worlds. Rapids battered their boats, supplies vanished, and the maps they carried were little more than guesses. But Powell pressed on notebook in one hand, paddle in the other. As the expedition pushed deeper into the gorge, Powell's attention was drawn not just to the danger, but to the rocks themselves. Somewhere near the foot of the inner canyon, he stopped the boats and climbed ashore. There he saw it, a line etched across the cliff face where old twisted black rock met a blanket of pale horizontal sandstone. Below the stone was nearly two billion years old, Above, just half a billion, Powell stared at the boundary, realizing he was looking at a billion years gone without a trace. He sketched, he wrote, he wondered. In that moment, the canyon became more than a chasm. It was a portal into Earth's lost time. The line Powell found in the Grand Canyon wasn't an isolated quirk. Geologists spread out across the globe, notebooks and hammers in hand, and everywhere they looked, the same pattern surfaced. In Scotland, at Sicker Point, Devonian sandstones rest on tilted, ancient grey wacker, a contact so stark James Hutton called it proof of Earth's great age. In the Canadian Shield, sheets of Neo-Proterozoic rocks lie directly over billion-year-old granite, the gap stretching across a continent. The story repeats in the Flinders Ranges of Australia, where Cambrian layers cover the eroded bones of the planet's oldest mountains, and in South Africa's Carp Val Craton, where Precambrian bedrock meets a much younger sedimentary blanket. Each site tells the same tale, younger rocks on top, ancient basement below and in between a billion years missing. This isn't just a local mystery, it's a planetary phenomenon. The question isn't whether time vanished, but how much and what force could erase so much of Earth's history everywhere at once? Geologists tried to put a number on the loss. Not just a missing chapter, but entire volumes ripped from the planet's library. Using sediment balances and the thermal diaries of ancient zircon crystals, they started to run the math. The numbers are almost impossible to grasp. In region after region, the evidence points to the same conclusion. Between four and six kilometers of solid rock, enough to swallow the tallest peaks on Earth, were scraped off the continents during the time gap. That's not a thin crust peeled away by gentle rain. That's the equivalent of leveling the Rocky Mountains, not once, but several times over. Every grain washed away had to go somewhere, filling new basins and building the ground under future seas. The scale of destruction is so vast, it's hard to imagine what force could do it. Yet the scars are there, cut into the bones of every continent, demanding an answer. Picture this, 700 million years ago, the continents were locked in ice. Not a gentle winter, but glaciers stretching from pole to pole, grinding across the land in a planetary deep freeze. Geologists call it Snowball Earth. During this time, ice sheets up to a kilometre thick bulldoze the surface, scouring away mountains, valleys and everything in between. Drop stones, huge boulders carried by glaciers and released as the ice melted, show up in rocks from this era, scattered across what are now tropical latitudes. These stones are silent witnesses to a world where even the equator lay buried beneath ice. 
paleomagnetic data confirms the glacier's reach, tracing their tracks from what is now Africa to Australia, from North America to Siberia. The scars left behind match the missing rock. Kilometers of crust erased. On paper, it fits. But there's a catch. The timing doesn't always line up. Some regions show signs of massive erosion before the ice ever arrived. Others, long after the glaciers retreated. If glaciers did the carving, their work wasn't as tidy or as global as the snowball earth theory first promised. But here is where the story gets really interesting. The glacial bulldozers of Snowball Earth had their moment in the spotlight, but a new line of evidence began to tip the scales. This time, the clues were not frozen in boulders or ancient valleys. They were locked inside crystals smaller than a grain of sand. Meet Rebecca Flowers, a geologist with a knack for finding the extraordinary in the ordinary. In a Denver parking lot, she scooped up granite gravel, extracted zircon grains, and sent them through a battery of tests. The results? These zircons held helium atoms trapped by radioactive decay, like tiny time capsules. By measuring how much helium had leaked out, flowers could tell when the rocks cooled as overlying mountains were stripped away, down to tens of millions of years. The ages pointed squarely at the time Rodinia began to break apart, between 750 and 600 million years ago. Not everywhere, not all at once, but enough to show that tectonic forces, uplift, rifting and relentless erosion, were peeling back the crust long before and after the big freeze. The evidence from Zircon thermochronology did not just challenge the glacial theory. It revealed a planet in upheaval, continents pulling apart and deep time recorded in the most unlikely places even a patch of gravel outside a conference center. But the closer scientists looked, the less the pieces seemed to fit. At geology conferences, debates flared over coffee and spilled into late night sessions. Some pointed to the cooling ages of zircon grains, showing pulses of erosion that did not sweep across the continents in one neat wave. Instead, the data revealed a patchwork of timings, one craton losing its ancient mountains while another sat untouched for millions of years. In North America, the numbers lined up with Rodinia's breakup, but across the Canadian Shield or the Kapval, K-A-H-P-Val, Creighton, the story twisted. Some unconformities formed before the glaciers of Snowball Earth ever arrived. Others were carved out after the ice had melted, long after tectonic rifts had split the land. The evidence refused to settle into a single global script. Thermochronology, glacial deposits, and sediment records all pointed in different directions. The result? A scientific standoff with teams trading papers and models, arguing whether the great unconformity was one event or a series of regionally timed catastrophes. Even the name itself came under fire. Should it be the great unconformities? For now, the mystery remains stubbornly unsolved, a billion-year question echoing through every continent's bedrock. As the ancient mountains wore down, something remarkable happened. Weathering released a flood of minerals, phosphorus, iron, and other nutrients into the seas. The atmosphere, once heavy with carbon dioxide, started to clear as chemical reactions locked that carbon away in rocks and sediments. Shallow oceans spread across the continents, their waters rich with the ingredients for life. In these new environments, soft-bodied organisms began to thrive. The Adiacaran biota, strange quilted creatures unlike anything alive today, left their imprints in the mud. For the first time, complex ecosystems took hold on the seafloor. The changes didn't stop there. The transformation of land and ocean chemistry set the stage for the next great leap in evolution, connecting the violence of lost time to the dawn of animal life. Patterns like the Great Unconformity aren't just ancient curiosities. They're part of a repeating cycle that shapes the entire planet. Every few hundred million years, continents crash together, pile up mountains, and then rip apart again. Each collision and breakup leaves behind scars in the rock record, just like the one Powell saw in the Grand Canyon. 
These cycles don't just move land masses, they drive climate swings, trigger floods of nutrients into the oceans and, sometimes, clear the way for new forms of life. Modern climate models draw on these ancient events to understand how weathering can pull carbon dioxide from the air, tipping Earth into ice ages or warming it up. The lessons written in stone remind us that the forces shaping our world today are echoes of deep time. Cycles that have erased mountains, rewritten oceans, and set the stage for everything alive. Up to 1.3 billion years of Earth's history are missing from the rock record, a gap first documented by John Wesley Powell in his 69 and since traced across every continent. Scientific studies confirm that between four and six kilometers of crust were stripped away, yet no single process explains the full scale or timing of this loss. Researchers have linked the Great Unconformity to both global glaciation events between 720 and 635 million years ago, and to the breakup of the supercontinent Rodinia around 750 to 600 million years ago, with Zircon thermochronology revealing complex, regionally variable patterns. Despite over 150 years of investigation and thousands of peer-reviewed studies, the exact cause remains unresolved. What is clear is that this colossal erosion triggered chemical changes in the oceans, fueling the rise of complex life and shaping the planet's climate. The Great Unconformity stands as a stark reminder. Even today, the planet's history can still hold secrets no one can fully explain.